In 1835, an unknown laborer in Kent, the UK, was doing his usual field work. When he struck the soil in what could be classified as a lucky spot, upon impacting the ground, his spade disappeared into the earth, breaking a doorway into an underworld like no other. The lad soon realized that he was standing on an entrance to hollow underground caverns that from the surface could not be seen. Word quickly spread regarding the find and the curiosity to see what was actually down there soon began to boil over. A local school teacher kindly volunteers his young son Joshua to make the dangerous trip down beneath the ground to see what was actually down there. He described rooms encrusted with millions of carefully arranged shells. People were obviously a little skeptical regarding the claims initially, yet when the hole was eventually widened, allowing to see for themselves, they were stunned when the boys' accounts were confirmed as completely true. Now known as the Shell Grotto of Margate, its origins or purpose still remains a complete mystery to this day. Almost all the surface area of the walls and roof are covered in mosaics created entirely out of seashells, totaling about 190 square meters of mosaic, calculated to be around 4.6 million shells. Various hypotheses have dated its construction to any time in the past 3,000 years. Theories have included that it was an 18th or 19th century rich man's folly, that it was a prehistoric astronomical calendar, and even that it could be connected to the Knights Templar. Interestingly, no publicly known scientific dating of the site has yet to be completed. The most frequently used shells throughout the mosaic, mussels, cockles, whelks, limpets, scallops, and oysters are largely local. They could have been found in sufficient numbers from four possible bays, yet the majority of the mosaic is formed from the flatwinkle, which is used to create the background infill between the designs. However, this shell is found only rarely locally, so would have been collected from shores west of Southampton. Shell Grotto is certainly an amazing, yet not very well-known find. More scientific research is clearly needed if we are to unravel the mysteries of its incredible construction. During the reign of King Tut between 1333 BC and 1324 BC, the understanding of iron metallurgy or indeed the casting of such objects was very limited. Iron smelting is the extraction of usable metal from oxidized iron ores. It is vastly more difficult than smelting tin and copper. Such metals could be cold worked in simple pottery kilns and then cast into molds, a process largely accepted as being present within ancient Egyptian times. However, the smelting of iron requires hot working and can only be melted in specially designed extremely heated furnaces. It is therefore not surprising that humans only mastered iron smelting after several millennia of the Bronze Age. However, there is a pair of relics found within ancient Egypt whose sheer existence disprove the officially held chronological account of when these hardened metals were developed. Or do they? Within the ancient wrappings of the sarcophagus which contained Pharaoh Tutankhamun, two daggers were discovered. Encased in gold sheaths, they were placed there more than 3,000 years prior. One had an iron blade, and the other with a blade made of hardened gold. Yet both are not made from regular metals. Amazingly, these daggers are in fact made from metals not native to Earth. It is officially accepted that it would have been quite difficult, nigh impossible, for ancient civilizations to have acquired iron in pure states. So most of the pure iron found in weaponry within this mysterious culture are academically accepted as coming from, quote, meteoric sources. This explanation may be easier to digest for the majority of population of Earth. However, it is not only a flawed explanation, but illogical. If this ancient Egyptian civilization, which possessed knowledge we are yet to rediscover, did indeed extract these alien metals from meteorites, yet largely accepted to have not been able to cast such metals, then an obvious question arises. How did they cast the metal into daggers? The official explanation offered provides no answer, as is often the case with out-of-place artifacts. A more logical scenario is that these daggers were in fact the remnants of a far older civilization, a civilization responsible for the construction of ancient Egypt. A group of people visited by, or indeed traveled to, people from another world entirely. Additionally, 
Modern advanced metallurgical analysis found that the iron dagger is not a normal meteoritic iron, but a complex, intelligent, and very strong alloy, containing various amounts of nickel, chromium, and cobalt. Furthermore, the nickel content is so high, nearly 25%, it makes this alloy totally different from those made by man. The alchemy required to make such a non-rusting metal was developed many centuries, if not millennia, after King Tut's death. Just where did these daggers come from? How old could they actually be? Were they made as a gift by a race who visited Earth? Apart from our postulations, it seems no one can produce a working theory. Dorchester, Massachusetts, USA, in 1852, at Meeting House Quarry, workers were using dynamite to break up the bedrock, when an explosion threw an artifact into the light of day, after spending many thousands of years under the earth. According to geologists, the Roxbury Rock, in which this mysterious artifact was embedded, has been dated as having accumulated between 570 and 593 million years ago, during the Eddie Cannon period. Imagine their surprise, when workers spotted a metallic object amongst the debris of the explosion, still partially embedded in a chunk of rock, and now sheared into two pieces from the forces of the blast. A zinc vase covered in flower decorations painted in solid silver. The bell-shaped pot is around four and a half inches tall and about six and a half inches long, and was noted as being exquisitely made. The age of the vase has been heavily debated amongst specialists, with many struggling to produce ages smaller than 100,000 years. Additionally, the species of flowers and plants that are illustrated upon the vase also went extinct over 100,000 years ago. Not surprisingly, but rather predictably, the pot along with all authenticated documentation regarding its discovery, mysteriously vanished without trace shortly before a full investigation into its amazing history could take place. The initial discovery was covered on June 5, 1852, from the publication of the magazine Scientific American, which confirms its authenticity, as indeed being found embedded in the solid ancient stone, 15 feet below the surface. But shortly after this coverage, like so many other amazing objects found around the world vanished without trace. Who made this amazing artifact, when was it made? If we go by the age of the rock in which it was discovered, it is amazingly over 500 million years old, but we may never know. Dorchester, Massachusetts, USA, in 1852, at Meeting House Quarry, workers were using dynamite to break up the bedrock, when an explosion threw an artifact into the light of day, after spending many thousands of years under the earth. According to geologists, the Roxbury Rock, in which this mysterious artifact was embedded, has been dated as having accumulated between 570 and 593 million years ago, during the Eddie Cannon period. Imagine their surprise, when workers spotted a metallic object amongst the debris of the explosion, still partially embedded in a chunk of rock, and now sheared into two pieces from the forces of the blast. A zinc vase covered in flower decorations painted in solid silver, the bell-shaped pot is around four and a half inches tall and about six and a half inches long, and was noted as being exquisitely made. The age of the vase has been heavily debated amongst specialists, with many struggling to produce edges smaller than 100,000 years. Additionally, the species of flowers and plants that are illustrated upon the vase also went extinct over 100,000 years ago. Not surprisingly, but rather predictably, the pot along with all authenticated documentation regarding its discovery, mysteriously vanished without trace shortly before a full investigation into its amazing history could take place. The initial discovery was covered on June 5, 1852, from the publication of the magazine Scientific American, which confirms its authenticity, as indeed being found embedded in the solid ancient stone, 15 feet below the surface. But shortly after this coverage, like so many other amazing objects found around the world vanished without trace. Who made this amazing artifact, when was it made? If we go by the age of the rock in which it was discovered, it is amazingly over 500 million years old, but we may never know. <laughs> 